Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Yahushua is the Messiah YouTube channel, also known as Yitim. We are at part five video. This is the word of life, spiritual warfare. We're taking a look at who is exempt from having being a soldier in the spiritual battle as we are in the journey of life. Though in the flesh, men are mostly considered to be selected for war, but we see also in the flesh that women and children can also be selected in a war. We see this in the flesh by the adversary who does try to counterfeit what God is doing, but only for evil. And God is doing what he does in the spiritual for his good pleasure. But in the spiritual, Yahushua calls men, women, and even children because the spirit is without partiality. We see this demonstrated to us concerning this in the word of life, in a command that he gives for instruction to parents to train up your children in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We will start out this video with taking a look at the full armor of God regarding the shield of faith. And we see this in Proverbs chapter 2, 6 through 7. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He soars up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. I was going through the reading of the book of Adam and Eve along with some of the brethren on the parable of the vineyard. Some of you may also be subscriber to Brothers Adam's channel. And as the Lord had reflect on the part of Adam telling Eve to come in the water with him, they were exiled from the garden at this point. This is where the Lord used this account to demonstrate to me about what he had spoken concerning the woman in Genesis chapter 3, concerning the woman and her seed and the serpent and his seed, the enmity between the two. After Adam instructed Eve to stand in the water with him till God speaks to them, Adam and Eve had not eaten from any of the tree outside of the garden, nor drank any water from any of the springs, so they were very hungry and thirsty. So they were afraid because they were not instructed to eat or drink outside the garden. While they were in the water, Satan appeared as an angel and called to Eve to come out of the water. So Eve came out of the water. And Adam said to Eve, What have you done? Why did you let the enemy deceive you again? Well, when we look at this, you would think, as men in the flesh, that the message is speaking concerning the women is that women are always tricked by the devil, being deceived. Easy pawns. But within the message, 
when we take a look at the spiritual, it reflects a deeper truth of Abba's word, which is sharper than double-edged sword. It knows the intent of the heart, and even to the marrow it pierces. When Satan fights against us, in, it is when we're in disobedience towards God's instruction. The words in Genesis 3, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and her seed, and your seed. Though it may appear to our fleshly mind that women are targets, but there is a deeper spiritual meaning there that we need to take a look at. And, of course, women are used by Satan, can be deceived by Satan, and not men. It may appear this way. And in the flesh, we see the blame game begins. But in the spirit, we see that the word is spoken to the serpent that Abba said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and her seed and your seed. We see again, just as in the garden, Satan's tragedy was to first single out the woman. And outside the garden, this is where we see the spiritual warfare begins with the woman. The battle began when she disobeyed God's instruction according to his word. And it was pertaining for her and Adam's life. We see a picture painted before us. To learn from when being tempted, we are in a position of being tempted by our own desires, our spiritual battle begins. And the minute we choose to disobey and transgress God's commands for our own desires, as it was with Adam and Eve, our spiritual armor is compromised. And we are left naked in certain areas and vulnerable. So this is why in part one video of the Word of Life, we went over the importance to understand not to quench the Holy Spirit. Can the Holy Spirit be taken away? Yes, but it has to be at a certain point where you're not hearing from God completely. Okay? But if you feel remorse, if you feel um, sad regarding your sin that you have done in your life, then you still have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is just quench. And when we quench the Holy Spirit, it leaves certain parts of our armor to have cracks in them. So when we use these principles, we can see this is how we can quench the Holy Spirit. Now, as Paul gave us instruction, we need to put on the full armor of God so that our armor is not compromised. So we see this spiritual battle also going on in Revelation 12 as it was spoken by Abba in the garden to Eve, to Adam, and also the serpent. So it's an ongoing battle and it's kind of like a full circle. Same strategy. We see this in Revelation 12, when the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to a male child. So, as outside the garden, we see the same strategy of Satan going after the woman. Now, also in Revelation 12, we see he is now going after her offspring, her seed. Not only did we see in the demonstration of part one video 
of how Yeshua himself had temptation by the devil. Okay? So, in a sense, we see that Yeshua is perfect. But we also can reflect that on the sexuality of the male, also men are tempted and deceived by the enemy. He would try to do that. So for us to think that just women are deceived by Satan, we have to renew our minds in this. Okay? So in the spiritual warfare, the women, men, and children are called as a soldier in God's army, his great army. We see an enlistment in prophecy of Joel chapter 2, where it says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So we see there's no partiality. There's no male, no female, nor Jew, no Gentiles. Okay? He pours out his spirit on all flesh. This includes, as is described in Joel chapter 2, that it will be on your elderly, male and female, your sons and your daughters, children, male and female, and also your maidservant, which is female, and also the men. The spiritual warfare is not prejudice, neither is Satan, nor his demons. The scripture says that the lack of knowledge is why we perish. Lack of understanding. This helps us to renew our minds to understand why in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, we are not to judge by the appearance, not to look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. We are warned when seeing ourselves in the mirror, we immediately turn around and forget what kind of men we are as a new creation in the image and likeness of God who is our creator who is also spirit and through our Messiah Yahushua Messiah Jesus Christ if we still view each other as male and female we are still thinking carnally. This does not mean that women are to act like men in the flesh, and the men as women. We know that Abba does not make mistakes in his creations, but men, instead being male and female, humans in the carnal mind try to change that which he has established from the beginning. He created them male and female. And also to remember as in the beginning, as Adam said of the woman, his wife, this is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. She will be called woman. So this is very interesting that the word man is created in the name given to her. So to pay close attention to the spiritual application is important. She is his equal, no partiality. So we see also in prophecy, analogy, symbols, and metaphors. So we see the term woman is used, male are used in application speaking of Israel. It also applies to men as mankind, male and females and their offspring. 
Revelation 7 speaks about God's servants who are sealed on their foreheads. The key word there is not male nor female. Okay. But tribes. 12,000 from each tribe of the Lion tribe of Judah, Israel. In Revelation 14, we see that there is 144,000. And this is a good example of those with the seal of God on their foreheads. They are spoken of that these are virgins. It does not say male or female. Again, using symbolism, analogies, and metaphor. So we see that this is prophecy. Let's move forward. We also know that it's spoke we also know that it speaks of them saying, These are they who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They did not defile themselves with women. Again, this is prophecy. Women are tied to other Gentiles who worship other gods okay and also it speaks there of these are they these are speaking of as a whole these are consists of male female and children now in Joel chapter 2 I will pour out my spirit on your young men, your sons and your daughters, my maidservants, your old men, and this is pertaining to male and female. And they will prophesy, dream dreams, and see vision, etc. For a purpose, as you continue reading, you see the Lord has a great army. It's for the purpose of the army of the Lord. These are given spiritual gift, which is the gift of peace for the war. This is, as we have spoken in a previous message, the Holy Spirit. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. So therefore, they have the full armor of God on. And the purpose is for the war. Described in Revelation 12, the war of the saints. Concerning the woman and her offspring. We also saw that the 144,000 are the first fruits, and from them comes the first fruit of the unable to number. They are also the house of Israel under the banner of Ephraim. Abraham seed through Yeshua, who is our Messiah. That which is spirit is spirit. Though we are in the fleshly body, we are to walk and live in the spirit. Being of the same mind, the mind of Christ. Yeshua demonstrated to us. He didn't consider it robbery to be equal, to call himself as the son of God. So we do not consider robbery for us to call ourselves children of God through Yeshua, the Messiah, our Lord, our Redeemer. So as the woman was allowed to sit at Yeshua's feet, they were not viewed in Yeshua's eyes. 
concerning their sexuality. I think this area is very well overlooked. When we are still in a carnal mind state, being double-minded in other doctrines and segregation by skin colors or sexual orientation, these causes us to hinder our walk and lack in our understanding. Much is spoken among believers that the women were not allowed in the synagogue. But as we read in scripture, we do see women are given a place in the synagogue in an area where they can be at. This is how I test those who say they are learning from Yeshua as a disciple. Again, Yahushua's first appearance was to Mary after he was risen. And the first one to be sent to go and tell my brothers and Peter, I have risen. So she was the first to actually go and declare the gospel message. Of Christ. Beautiful. This is the first message of the gospel. She was sent to her brethren to go and tell them, I have risen. We see it also demonstrated in the scriptures that wherever this gospel is preached, what this woman has done will be as a memorial unto her. And yet, the gospel is preached. With the gospel message, hardly any memorial is being done according to what Yeshua has spoken. And here's what Christ himself prophesied about concerning Mary. So I share the gospel message with you and speak in the words of what my Yeshua Messiah said. In love and obedience, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Give an honor to those of the body which are not seen and seems to be the least. This is the same woman bringing the box with the anointed oil. Mary's love she displays in service to the Son of the living God, having so much love for him in love and obedience, because she was forgiven much, that even being a woman which was looked down in the culture of the men system in her time, and though she was sent in obedience to the instruction of Yeshua, Messiah, her own brethren, even though they sat at Yeshua's feet, also thought she was delusional, deceived maybe. So they was thinking in the flesh. Women's testimony are not to be received. Or maybe it goes back to the thinking that the woman was beguiled, as Paul brought up, which is very important to look at and see what exactly Paul was showing us. So thinking that the woman was beguiled by the serpent and then thinking men cannot be beguiled by the serpent, well, we are all sinful, corrupt nature in the flesh. We all can be tempted by our own desire, just as Eve was, to come to the place where we make a decision. Do we obey our own desires or do we obey Abba's instruction? 
the word of life. So let's take a look, because till our mind is renewed spiritually, we cannot grow in our faith to faith. We will see, as Yeshua Messiah said a few times to the men, his disciples, you are a little faith. Now this takes us into the account of the enmity between the seed of the woman and the serpent and his seed. Yahushua fasted 40 days in the wilderness when he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Now the devil, the serpent of old, appeared to him to tempt him. It parallels with the prophecy in Genesis chapter 3 and Revelation 12. The dragons stood before the woman to devour her child as soon as it was born. So let's keep in mind, Yahushua was in the wilderness right before his ministry started. This paints a picture to us, to demonstrate to us. Just as Adam and Eve was outside of the garden, they're in the wilderness. It's just beautiful. Praise Yah. So we see before his birthing, when he was about to enter into his ministry, as his tribulation is as a woman travailing in birth pains. We also see, though he is in the flesh as a male, does not omit himself from being tested and having entered the spiritual warfare. So as I was going through this message, the Lord was having me reflect on some of the messages that were given to post for the household. And the message of time to be restored, which was posted on September 9th, but it was given September first okay now in that message we see that there was a message here of john 7 verse 1 through 9 it's what i was called to reflect on and it reads after these things yeshua jesus walked in galilee for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews of the Feast of Tabernacles was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Then Jesus said to him, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because I testify of it, that it works are evil. So this was in the time to be restored message, and also Leviticus 23. And it was speaking there concerning the time of trumpets, to blow the trumpet, and also that was done on the first day, the first day of the seventh month, and we see the trumpet is blown. And when we think of blowing a trumpet, it's speaking there as 
the watchmen, they are called to warn the brethren when they see the sword coming. And the sword is the war, pertaining to war. To sound the alarm. And if we don't warn them as watchmen, then their blood is going to be on our hands. Okay? So Leviticus 23 also spoke about concerning from the ninth day of the evening to evening of the tenth day, we see that that is for atonement. The only one who can keep us from not having sin is Yeshua, who is the Messiah. And he is our high priest. So he's the one that restores us and bring us back where our garments are clean. Sin is transgression against the law. Now, we see this same reflection here of a pattern, okay, that I was shown. I was led to Revelation 9 concerning the ninth day of the seven month after the trumpet is blown and sound then there is a ninth day that we were to pay attention to which is the evening to evening of the tenth day he used this to be made a revelation night and this is the trumpets okay then the fifth angel sounded and i saw a star fall Fallen from heaven to the earth, to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit, like a smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth. And to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill, but to torment them for five months. So, as I was reading this, I started to see that the Lord was speaking a message concerning what is going to take place and what is coming to those who do not have the Holy Spirit, who are not sealed with the Holy Spirit. Remember, we started out the message regarding our armor being compromised, okay? If our armor is compromised, more than likely you will be wounded, injured. So not necessarily kill. They're not given power to kill, only to torment, okay? So this is important to look at and for us to grasp what the message is truly showing us, that this is the time of restoration. We are to prepare in yourself to meet our bridegroom. But before that process happens, the fire of judgment is coming. And so he is very mindful of us and he doesn't want any of us to perish that's not his will that is the will of the enemy so he uses our own desire the lust of the eyes the things in the world being still attached to the world not attached to our buying but being tempted with these desire that is of the world and so we can be compromised so when this comes that we are actually being injured. This is the time of trumpets. Keep that in mind. The next scripture I was led to was 
It's Revelation 17. Now, John chapter 7, 1 through 9. So 1 plus 9 is 10. That gives you 17. And I'm just repeating how it was demonstrated to me step by step because the Lord works in this way. Numbers were not given or numbers were not originally created by Satan. He counterfeits. He takes what belongs to God and corrupts it. All right. So the one who deals with numbers, that's why there's also a book of numbers, shows that he does numberings. Okay. And we see this in Revelation 7 with the seal of the 144,000. And so this is where we're going to is Revelation 17. And this is speaking about the scarlet woman and the scarlet beast. And this is the wrath that's coming. Okay, these are the bowls. We're not appointed to wrath, but we are, however, appointed to the trumpets because this is the time of the symbol in herself, getting herself to be redeemed by the last trumpet. It's prophecy. Again, it's concerning us. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy. And having seven heads and ten horns, the woman was aware in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of the abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. So again, we're seeing patterns here in the numbering. So 7 plus 10 of John chapter 7, 1 through 9, reflect 17, okay? And also, when you multiply 7 times 10, it gives you 70. So we see Revelation 17 is speaking about the other sign that appeared in Revelation 12 along with the sign of the seed of the woman. So we see this sign is being displayed at the same time. True prophet, false prophets. True teacher, false teachers. All coming in the name of Christ. So we see the seven reflects the seven kings and the ten reflects the ten horns, okay? And that is the 70 nations. The next 
Scripture I was led to is in Torah, Old Testament, and this is Leviticus 27. And this is concerning the redeeming persons and the properties that's dedicated to Abba, Yahweh, Yahushua, Yahuwah. Now, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When a man consecrates by a vow certain persons to the Lord, according to your valuation, if your valuation is of a male from 20 years old up to 60 years old, then your valuation shall be 50 shekels of silver, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. If it is a female, then your valuation shall be 30 shekels. And when I read this part, I was reminded that Yeshua was actually betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. And we see that this is pointing to a female, okay? So he's showing that he's actually equal with the woman, okay? Which is his bride. Interesting. You see the parallel in that. And if from five years old up to 20 years old, then your valuation for a male shall be 20 shekels. And this remind me of Joseph. Joseph was sold by his own brethren for 20 pieces of shekels. And for a female, 10 shekels. And if, and if from a month old up to five years old, then your valuation for a male shall be five shekels of a silver, of silver. And for a female, your valuation shall be three shekels of silver. And if from 60 years old and above, if it is a male, then your valuation shall be 15 shekels. And for a female, then and for a female, 10 shekels. So we see in verse 8, But if he is too poor to pay your valuation, then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall set a value for him according to the ability of him who vowed. The priest shall value him. Now, as I read that, it reminded me of what Yeshua did for us. Although we see a parallel here. Yeshua is our high priest. Now, he is also doing a selection of who are going to be first fruits unto him. First fruit, which is a reflection of what? Revelation 7, the Lion tribe of Judah, 12 tribe of Israel. So they're called to be kings and priests to our God. So let's just keep that in mind. They have a number that's tied to them. They're also male and female because Leviticus 27 points us to these ones who are redeemed. Okay, they're redeemed persons as well as property. Property can also be redeemed and we're seeing the symbol here reflect into our land of inheritance that as cold joint ears along with them we have an inheritance of what the inheritance is the land of Israel there's the property so how did he redeem us not with shekels what the enemy made for evil was through the money he used the money which is money is not bad, but the money we see as a, as a reflection in Leviticus 27, that for the sanctuary, there was shekel being valuation for each person's that was considered first fruits. And this again, we see that it was a reflection of not just men, 
not just female, not just children. So again, it's important for us to look at these things because it shows us the bigger picture of the process. And the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Israel does not change. He's the same yesterday and forever. So we are redeemed by the Lord, precious blood. Now, how does the multitude come into this? The multitude are still the people, the children of God. They're the seed of Abraham. And if you're the seed of, of Christ, you're the seed of Abraham. So your identity is hidden in Christ, in Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Okay? So it's important to know your identity. Know where you come from. The root system. Now, we also see that not just to look at Revelation, but we also saw in the prophecy of Joel, chapter 2, who the Holy Spirit, which is also our seal for the our day of redemption. What is redemption? It's to redeem us. So the multitude comes in as well, because the multitude are also sealed, okay? And they wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb, just as the 144,000 did. So through the 144,000 first fruit, we see other fruits coming behind them. And they are the ones that repent and they lay down their lives and not giving up, turning away from the faith, but keeping their faith in the testimony of Yahushua. Okay? And so what are they doing? They're not taking the mark. Okay? Even unto the death, they're being faithful. So they wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. And the Lamb's blood redeemed them. So even though we see a process of Revelation 7 concerning the offspring of the 144,000 being first fruits, all those who make it to the 1,335 days also are in the blessed hope day. We also see, as spoken and done in concerning the 1,290 days, 1,260 days, and 1,335 days, which is the blessed hope day. Blessed is he who comes and dies from now on to the 1,335 days. Also, while I was doing the reading here in Leviticus 27 concerning the amount of the shekels, I started to see a reflection in those shekels that were being in valuation for each male, females, and children, and elderly, male and female. When I started to look at those I started to see a reflection of the 1,260 days and also a reflection of 1,335. Now, I also added up all of the shekels and it came up to 143. As a whole, the whole entire first fruits as a whole, the whole groups that was being dedicated to the Father. So this is the select portion that is for the Father's purpose, okay? And again, male, female, and children. And also, not just young people, but elderly as well. No one is missing from this group because also the multitude is, the genders are the same as well, okay? But these were just a selected portion that would carry out the task that is specifically for them to do. So, and it concerned the numbering. The unable to number don't have the task of the 144,000. That's why we see in Revelation, it says that no one can learn the song except the 144,000. Okay? The 144,000, they know their identity. Now, let's move forward. 
So the 1, 4, 3, as we added up all the shekel, as for the whole group of the first fruits that's being dedicated to the Father. When you look at the foreshadows there, we see that adding up those numbers gives you 1, 4, 3. My husband had also received this insight that the measure that he was given, and he began to share this with me. And I was just amazed. And we were just glorifying Abba and Yahushua, saying, Praise Yah. And my husband says that the number 143 in the times when pagers used to be out, that his father and him used to text 143, saying, I love you. Now, it's very interesting because the 144,000 are those of the Philadelphia Church. So when we go to Revelation, we'll see this as well. And this is um, concerning the faithful church and it's Revelation 3, verse 7. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 says, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, says he, who is holy, he who is true, and he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. And no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, and have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews, and are not but a lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. Remember Genesis 3, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, the enmity. So we see there is a war between those who are in the Philadelphia church as well. No one <laughs> is restricted from this war that is spiritual because we are being birthed spiritually. Okay? So when you take a look at this, it says, furthermore, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. So that is a reflection of those who are the serpent. It says that Genesis chapter 3, we went over this in the previous videos as well, to demonstrate so that we can see that what the Lord has said for the curse of the serpent, but upon his belly he will crawl and lick the dust of the earth all the days of his life. Now we read in Revelation regarding the locust that comes out from the bottomless pit. Okay? So we see this here. But they were told not to harm those who have the seal of God on their forehead. So they are in full armor. And it says here, because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, let no one take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of my city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches 
So we see that there is spirit, just as we read in Revelation, harm only those who do not have the seal of God on their forehead. So the other key point there to look at in Revelation 3, it's where Yeshua is speaking about the vindication regarding the faithful church. I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. So the insight of what my husband gave to me was that the 143 that's calculated among the shekels as a whole, we are seeing a reflection here. It's showing us the mystery of the deep hidden things that the Holy Spirit can reveal to us and is revealing to us. Okay. And what is that? The 143 meant, I love you. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Now, That's Leviticus. So I wanted to share this with you so that you guys could be encouraged as well to, you know, strive. It says that in the scriptures, Yeshua himself was speaking. And he was speaking to not just his disciples. He was speaking to the multitude. The disciples are used for the task, but they are of the brethren. They are the servants. Now, whenever they were used as bond servants, okay, they saw their brethren as a whole. They loved the brethren. That's many times they would stay up and, and lose sleep. And they have this yearning and desire to meet with their brethren and see their brethren and to pray for their brethren. They had this fervent love that we are called and reminded to have as the body of Christ for one another. And also we see this display by the saints to the servants as well. They helped come in alongside praying for them when they request for prayers. They also would come alongside and, you know, whatever area they had need of. And they would um, bring it their distribution that they have or whatever kind it may be towards a uh, property, or maybe um, grain offering or whatever they had in their possession that Yahuwah, the Creator, Yahweh had blessed them with to be able to distribute among the household to those brethren who had need. And so, again, we've seen the demonstration that the love is in action. And these are the fruits that goes to our accounts, okay, on their behalf that they receive. And they will receive that reward when it's the time for the rewarding of the prophets and your servants and the saints. But again, we come back and we see a reflection here. The message was to... Be watchful and to be serious in our prayers as well to have the fervent love. Now, the Lord was revealing this to me to reflect on the sealing process. We are in the sealing process, okay? The sealing process is about to come to a close and the 144,000 will be revealed. They will be doing their tasks. They're already prophesying among us in the ministries. Whatever tools that Abba allows for them to use, what the enemy made for evil, God turned it out for the good of those who love him. And that is those who are scattered abroad. So whatever we are being used to be able to reach out to the brethren all over in different ways, different communication and technology as well. And I thank Abba for that because I see that the Spirit is moving strongly to bring that restoration where the children, the heart of the children is given back to the Father. And that's the 
Law and the Prophets. And we see brethren out there and they're to do that task and they're counted as the 144,000 within the number to do this. But also there's brethren out there too that are sharing the message of reconciliation of the children heart going back to the father but now the father heart is given back to the children so we see the new testament in this and the new testament is a expansion of the spiritual things because why we're going to be burdened spiritually fully completed just as you should some of us may have a resurrection testimony and some of us the rise and either way it's a resurrection death and resurrection testimony because this flesh dies just as when we first heard the gospel message of christ and the kingdom and what did we do we receive our baptism to, of the remission of sin and we were also when he was crucified was dead with him buried with him and then when he was resurrected we were also risen with him and that's why we have the gift of peace which is the holy spirit to be able to armor us so that we could be children of god he gave us the right to be children of god with all of what's going on in the world with the seed of the enemy that are planted which are the tears in the midst of the world along with the children of God, who are the sons of the kingdom. So we need to have discernment and to test everything so that we won't be deceived by the enemy. Now, the heart of the children is given back to the fathers and the father's heart is given back to the children. That reconciliation is the time frame that we are in. This is time for us that Yeshua is using the brethren to get us ready even more so now because he is drawing near. But before he comes, we are going to go through the fire. All right. We're going to go through labor. But Mount Zion's children, New Jerusalem, Isaiah 66 speaks about the prophecy and Isaiah 62 in our war broke out video message part one and part two we will encourage you to go over that so you can have a deeper understanding if you weren't able to see those yet i pray that this message will be encouraged to everyone and that we'll press deeper into our relationship with yah and yeshua our messiah jesus christ and that we will love because we can know the mysteries we can also sing like an angel. We can also prophesy. But he can say to us, depart from me. I never knew you. And that's something to really look into. If you have questions, as we always encourage, go and seek him in prayer. And he will reveal it to you. Because he has promised us the helper. And what does it mean if you're doubting or you think that Man, I sin so much, I may not have the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you this. The Holy Spirit was removed from Saul. He have come to this place where it was pretty bad. But there was a while where he was still doing his own desire. It took a process of it, okay? Now, I encourage you guys with this message. If you are thinking you may not have the Holy Spirit, Again, we are called to crucify our flesh daily so that we can walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We are not to play with sin, and we should not treat sin as though it's a mistake. We all make mistakes, but a mistake, if you keep repeating mistakes, then you make a habit of mistakes. It's no longer a mistake. A mistake means that it's something that you did not knowingly or by assumption when we're speaking about the sin that leads to death this is important for us to understand it says as well that if anyone who says they know god and sins they they're not his okay 
because Yeshua, Jah, as our high priest and our mediator and our king, is to bring us under the rulership of the authority of the Father, which is Spirit, the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. So we have to yield. Now, there is a difference between us continually sinning when willfully, and that is very dangerous to play with, okay, or to be in that position. Now, how many times Yeshua forgives us for our sins? He forgives us for our sins, but we cannot forget prophecy. This is Yeshua speaking. So we do not make him a liar. We make every man a liar, even ourselves, okay? We do not play with sin. In Proverbs, the book of wisdom, it speaks about, can a man take fire into his bosom and not get burned? Do you think that it will not affect you? Salvation. He says he can blot our name out. He also can remove, blow out our lampstand. That is the Holy Spirit. Okay? So we got to be careful. And I warn you, this is a hard message for me to give because despite whether I'm liked or not, I want to speak the truth out of love because I honestly do have the love for all my brethren as though they're my own children, as though they are me. Help me in this area, which I have been helped many a times by my brethren who also walk in obedience and love. Um, they encourage me, you know, but I, I also submit to them. Because scripture also said, we are to submit to one another. It calls for the husband to submit to their wives and the wives submit to their husband and the children to submit to their parents. No partiality. And we also are to submit to Yahushua, his authority, and submit to who else? Our creator, the Father's will. So we are to submit to one another Submit to God first, then we can submit to one another in spirit and in truth. So the word of God is speaking in truth and it's given to us. It's infallible. Okay. Now, I also want to encourage you to press deeper, but also remember to try to reach out to your friends and family as well. Okay. Because this is how we are the light as light bearers. This is how we bear witness to the word. As Abba, every day that you wake up to give you opportunities, to give you the word to speak in the hour when you're around your family members. And he will, he's faithful. He will do it because you're doing his purpose, his work. You know, like Yeshua said, why are you looking for me? Did you not know I am doing my father's business? Well, so are those who are called to be the soldiers. This is what we're doing. And I encourage you to keep the faith. Hold on to the faith and testimony. And don't let go, no matter what. There's times coming up ahead that's going to be really fiery. But at the same time, know that he's trying us just like Shamrach, Meshach, and Abednego went through the fire. The Lord was with them in the midst of it. And we see that they didn't even burn, not even their clothes, not even their hair. And they came out through it. So this is the God of the Bible. Same today and yesterday. And Yeshua said, these things you see me do, you will also do. And greater. So, those who keeps the commandments of the law and teaches those to keep it, they will be the greatest in the kingdom. Those who teaches to break the commandments and they don't keep it as well, so they're teaching not to keep it, they will be the least in the kingdom. Now, they're still getting in. So, we don't need to argue if we're to keep the commandments or not. The ten virgins are likened to the kingdom. We see both woke up from their sleep 
Both were trimming their lamps. That's the word of God from Genesis to New Testament. And also, only a few had the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we're focusing only on one book. Either it's the New Testament only and not reading the first books. Okay, the beginning of the book. Or we're only keeping the beginning of the book and decide to, oh, turn away totally from the New Testament. And so we deny him. And we have not kept his word. And we have not persevered because we're supposed to persevere in sound doctrine that was handed down to the apostles. There is only 12 apostles. 12 apostles. The foundations are built. We see that in the reflection of Revelation 21. And the walls. The walls is almost complete. And then the kingdom will be ushered in. He came to build the kingdom first, the place of the city, okay, which is the bride. He came to do that first. And then where we're heading into the messianic rulership, the lion tribe of Judah, he's the lawgiver. And the law would not depart from him. And also the staff would not depart between his feet. So. I just want to say thank you guys for your time and for listening. And I'm going to continue to pray for all of us. This is the time of the praying. I do believe it's a reflection of the 30 minutes that was in prayer for our half an hour of silence. And the, where we see that the prayers of the saints is given up to the angel. And then there is a fire that is taken from the altar and is put along with the prayers of the saints in the center and thrown to the earth. And this is where the trumpet starts. So I would encourage you guys to keep those things in mind. This is a time for us to really keep our lamps burning because the days are evil and it's going to get worse. It's going to get dark. Okay. Yeah, bless.
in the renewed right spirit within me uh, create a me a clean heart oh lord and purify me with your word living world 